Good evening and welcome to the May 17th, 2016 San Bruno Planning Commission meeting. Roll call, please. Chair Biasotti. Here. Vice Chair Kyle. Present. Commissioner Chase. Commissioner Johnson. Here. Commissioner Mishra. Here. Commissioner Peterson. Commissioner Samut. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Johnson will lead us in the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Item th uh, communications, item two. Uh, Chair Biasotti, there are no additional communications this evening. Thank you. Item three, this is a section of the meeting where there's uh, comments that are not on the agenda. Does anyone have anything to bring forward to the commission that's not on the agenda? No? Okay. Item four, conflicts of interest. Anyone? Fine. Fine. Okay. In that case, we'll move on to item five, conduct of business, capital improvement budget A. Request for an adoption of a re resolution confirming the 2016-2021 five-year capital improvement program. Staff, please. Uh, Chair Biasotti, I'd like to do a brief introduction. Tonight, Mark Sullivan, our long-range planning manager, will present the report. As we've done in the past, the, the intent really is that we're presenting to you the new capital improvement program projects that are coming forward, being recommended by staff for this coming budget, this coming year's fiscal budget. And the intent of the Planning Commission is to evaluate these projects as to whether they're in conformance with the city's general plan. The Planning Commission is not looking at the budgetary aspects of these projects, simply looking at these projects in terms of do the projects forward and support policies in the city's general plan. In Mark Sullivan's staff report, he's gone through these proposed projects, he's analyzed them, and he's making a recommendation as to their conformity with the general plan. So that's the focus of tonight's presentation. And with that, Mark, could you proceed, please? Good evening, Chair and Planning Commissioners. Um, state law requires that the Planning Commission review um, capital improvement programs um, in the, uh, the every year's fiscal, uh, every fiscal year budget for conformity with the, with the city's general plan. Um, and you've done this on an annual basis, so you've already approved the ongoing uh, projects which appear in the, in the CIP. So we're only looking at the, at the new projects. And some of these are, I mean, they're, they're really all ongoing programs, but they're uh, uh, projects that are budgeted for, for this coming year or even for the next five years because the, the capital budget is, is, um, is uh, a fiscal year 2016-17 budget for the, the coming year, and it's also a five-year budget which looks at um, how the projects that might, may be coming forward in the next five years within those programs. So as you know, the general plan is a, is a long-range comprehensive vi vision for the uh, physical development of the city, and it has individual elements um, that provide the policy framework for uh, capital projects. Um, the CIP projects are in this uh, budget are designed to protect, preserve, and enhance the city's infrastructure and extend the useful life of public facilities and improve or enhance city services. In this year's <coughs> CIP, the new projects fall under uh, the following uh, divisions or, or departments. There's their water capital projects, wastewater capital projects, stormwater capital projects, cable TV, parks and facilities, and streets. And as I mentioned, you've already approved the ongoing projects that will appear in, in the uh, CIP budget. So staff has reviewed the, the, the CIP for conformity with the general plan and determined that the projects proposed in the updated C, CIP during this fiscal year conform to the city's general plan. Um, and the, the, your action tonight is, as David mentioned, only to determine that whether the projects are in conformance with the general plan or not. Um, and then following piece, uh, planning commission review, 
the CIP would be forwarded to the City Council where a formal decision would be made on the projects and the, and the budget. And your staff report includes brief descriptions of all of the projects and staff's ration, rationale for finding the, the projects in conformity with the general plan. And additional information um, is provided as an attachment to the, the resolution. So as I mentioned, we are the, the, there are 16 individual new projects. Um, they fall within six different programs. Um, and I will just briefly, very briefly go through them. In the water capital, there's a, um, a project to design and construct the antiquated regulating station at, at Arbor Court. There's uh, planning, design, and construction and installation of re replacement sewer mains um, along uh, various streets, uh, mostly in the east side of the city. Um, there's design and rehabilitation of Sneath Lane and Lake Drive pump stations. There's, and there's maintenance and repairs for all five uh, city water wells. Um, the rationale for general plan conformity is pretty straightforward. Um, there, although there are several here, the main uh, policy is to ensure that the city's water supply systems are adequate to serve the city's present and anticipated needs, and that water conservation is implemented in all residences and businesses. Under the wastewater capital, there are uh, two projects. One is a design and construction management for replacement sewer main segments that are identified as priorities in, this, in the uh, sewer master plan. And the other is the construction of uh, the sp uh, spy glass pump station, which will begin uh, this year. And the rationale for that project is, again, to ensure that the city's wastewater collection and treatment systems are adequate to serve the present anticipated needs, uh, are safe, and are environmentally sound. Um, in the stormwater capital, uh, there are two projects. Uh, one is to complete a feasibility analysis for construction of a detention basin located in Crestmore Canyon. Um, and this, this uh, is a really interesting project, which is designed to alleviate flooding impacts in the lower area of San, of San Bruno by retaining storm um, runoff upstream. Um, it would also uh, eliminate the need for significant expenses um, for pipeline projects that would be needed if this did not take place. Um, the second project is the design and installation of approximately 360 trash capture devices inside storm drain inlets. Um, and this meets uh, California Regional Water Quality Control Board and San Mateo County Stormwater municipal regional permit requirements. The rationale for these projects is to retain, well, one of them is to retain existing open space areas that serve as detention ponds in order to retain stormwater, recharge aquifers, and prevent flooding. And uh, the other one um, is covered in, in various areas. One of them is to preserve wetland habitat in the San Francisco Bay margins, because that's where a lot of the, uh, those solid um, sort of refuse ends up. Um, under the, the cable capital, there's one project, which is basically um, uh, producing annual system upgrades, um, including capacity upgrades on the current plant, replacement of uh, equipment, and uh, preventative measures to, to ensure uh, that the, the, the system is, is up as much as possible. And the, uh, the rationale for that is to continue uh, to grow core video business while deploying and promoting new services, which requires uh, uh, continuous upgrades. Then under the parks and facilities capital, there are three projects. The first uh, is in the Crestmore neighborhood area, and that's part of a larger uh, Crestmore uh, replacement and re uh, reconstruction of, of infra infrastructure that was damaged in the 2010 pg e gas main explosion and fire. Um, and as you know, that involves, that's a complex and you know, comprehensive upgrades and replacement of streets, curbs and gutters, sidewalks, storm drainage, and, and other, and all the infrastructure systems, essentially. But this specifically would fund the development of a master plan for the Earl and Glenview Park, 
and the park will include areas for play, socializing, um, walking pathways, and um, that planning is expected to, to go through this year and with an anticipated completion of construction in 2017. Um, the second project is the Florida Avenue Park. As you know, the city acquired uh, the property in 2015, and uh, this project would plan and design the neighborhood park. Um, it would also strive to retain uh, historic architectural elements from the um, existing home that was, that was there that has some very interesting architectural uh, features. Um, it, there, there would be children's play equipment and there would also be areas for people to gather and, uh, and relax in a neighborhood park. Um, and the third project is uh, Police Plaza Security Enhancements. This uh, project would design and install security improvements in the joint San Francisco BART police station. It would include uh, installing security gates and fences to separate and protect empl employee vehicles, which are now exposed there at the bottom <coughs> floor of the BART garage, and they're not, they're not protected. Um, and the second one would be to update and replace outdated security uh, cameras and access control systems. Uh, the rationale for uh, the conformity finding there is, is that uh, in the open space and recreation <coughs> element is to strive to locate neighborhood parks facilities within one third walking distance of all residences in San Bruno and that's an area that, that lacks a nearby park. Um, and additionally, um, uh, in the uh, public facilities element, um, provide adequate public safety services for all San Bruno residents, including police protection, fire protection, um, and emergency management. The uh, final area is the streets capital, and that includes uh, four projects. One is to replace approximately 680 structurally deficient street light poles. Um, that's out of uh, over 2,100 that are in the city, so that's a, a large number of, of, of light poles. Many of them are very, they're 60 to 80 years old and in need of, of repair or replacement. Um, the second is the pave, pavement management program. And this is an ongoing uh, project and um, as I won't go into any details because I don't understand it all that well either, but the pavement condition index for the city, which is on a, a range of one to 100, um, this, the average uh, score for San Bruno is 64 and the target is, is 70. So there are ongoing um, pavement improvements to move us towards that goal. And, um, and also, uh, cost, it's cost effective, because the longer you wait, the more expensive it is to repair roadways. Um, the third project is to install traffic signal uh, priority control systems. Um, and this would enable emergency uh, vehicles to override um, the, 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 uh, the intersection lights and uh, activate momentary right of way for emergency vehicles to get through an intersection. Um, and the last project is pedestrian uh, crosswalk and safety improvements. And this would be to design and construct the, uh, pedestrian warning systems to enhance safety uh, by reducing crashes, well, conflicts, I would put it, between vehicles and pedestrians at unsignalized intersections and mid-block pedestrian crossings. Um, and the locations for these uh, have, have not been determined. They will be determined based on discussions with police department, traffic safety, and parking committee, and the San Bruno Community Foundation. So the conformance, the general plan conformance uh, rationale for that is to install safety improvements for pedestrian crossings and um, there's, there's actually five or six policies that directly relate to improving the street system and, and safety and emergency access. Um, so that, that concludes all of the projects. Um, and I 
think it's it's fairly evident that they that they're all very necessary to the functioning of the city, um, and uh, they all fall within uh, the general plan um, sort of uh, program for or goals for uh, maintaining infrastructure and services in San Bruno to meet the city's needs. So that concludes my presentation. If you have any questions. Thank you. <clears throat> any questions for your staff? Mark, I do have one. If you could speak just a little bit to the uh, Crestmore Canyon project, because it's kind of unusual and it's new and it's something the folks at home probably haven't heard about. So maybe if you can give them just a little bit more detail on that. Um, yeah, well, the, what I know about this, this project is that it is a, um, it's to develop a master plan. So it's, 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 it's to investigate um, creating a retention pond that would um, ab capture, um, absorb the, the flow because Crestmore Canyon is a, you know, is a sort of collection point for a lot of water coming off the, the hills to the west um, and uh, reduce the amount of water that would be, uh, you know, that would end up flowing into the, uh, the stormwater system, control it better. And I don't know if David has, a, has anything additional there. You know, I think that's a good overview. Fundamentally, the idea really is to detain water upstream so that we minimize flooding impacts that may occur downstream in our downtown area in the lower San Bruno area. So fundamentally, that's the objective of that proposed project. And we have prepared, as you see in your, in your packet, a resolution for your consideration to basically take an action indicating that you find these proposed projects in conformance with the city's general plan. So I would encourage you to review that that resolution, and if you agree with staff's recommendation to adopt that resolution. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, there's no other comments for staff? No. All right, then we'll open up the public hearing. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak on these? Okay. Public comment is closed. And do we have a motion or a? It's a roll call vote. Yes. So I move that. Um, we move this. Does this go to City Council for? Yeah, this is a recommendation. The recommendation to, to City Council. Yeah. Right. Move that we that, that we uh, move this, adopt the resolution, and move it forward to City Council. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. We have a motion and second. It's a roll call vote, I believe. Chair Biasotti. Aye. Vice Chair Kayal. Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Mishra? Aye. Commissioner Samut? Aye. Thank you. All right. Item B, 406, 418 San Mateo Avenue. Thank you and good evening. Um, the applicant has applied for an extension of a conditional use permit, parking exception, and architectural review permit for the plaza project located at 406 418 San Mateo Avenue. The plaza project is an approved mixed use development that would contain 83 residential units, approximately 6,975 square feet of commercial space, and 106 parking spaces in a subgrade garage. As I recall, the plaza project was reviewed by the Architectural Review Committee and Planning Commission and ultimately approved by the City Council. City Council appro uh, approval included a general plan amendment, an amendment to the transit corridors plan, a zoning code text amendment, a conditional use permit, parking exception, and an architectural review permit. The general plan amendment and the transit corridors plan amendment went into effect immediately after the October 28, 2014 City Council meeting, and the associated ordinance for the, for the zoning code text amendment went into effect on December 25th of 2014, which was 30 days after the second reading. What's important to note is that a condition of approval was included in stating that the conditional use permit, parking exception, and architectural review permit shall expire if a building permit is not obtained 
within one year of the effective date of the associated ordinance. Therefore, a building permit would have had to have been issued by December 25th of 2015. However, San Bruno Municipal Code allows the Planning Commission to extend the conditional use permit, parking exception, and architectural review permit for up to one year. In November of 2015, the applicant requested a six-month extension, which was granted by the Planning Commission. Based on the six-month extension granted by the Planning Commission, a building permit must be issued by June 25th of 2016. The applicant has worked very closely with staff over the last few months regarding a number of plan submittals. In fact, as we speak, staff is actively reviewing improvement plans, which cover all proposed improvements within the public right-of-way. We're also reviewing shoring, dewatering, and excavation plans, as well as construction documents for the foundation, the garage, and the overall structure. At this point, staff does not anticipate completing our review and issuing a building permit by the June 25th, 2016 deadline. Therefore, the applicant has requested an additional six-month extension. Based on the proposed six-month extension, a building permit would now have to be issued by December 25th of 2016. The applicant anticipates obtaining a building permit by August of 2016, which would be within that six-month extension period. Overall, staff is supportive of the six-month extension and would recommend that the Planning Commission adopt the attached resolutions, which are included as Exhibit B and Exhibit C within your staff report. I'd be happy to answer any clarifying questions. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Any questions for staff? Yep, to Chair. Chair Smith. Matt, under the analysis portion of your report, uh, and maybe I'm reading this incorrectly, but halfway through the paragraph, it says, ultimately, the applicant must obtain a building permit and complete substantial work in reliance on that permit by December 25th, 2016, if the six-month extension is granted. So what you're saying tonight is you're not going to have it ready by June 25th, so they'll get a, they'll get a later start date. Um, and I can't imagine that by December 25th, they will have substantial work completed. So is, if I'm reading, that's what I'm, that's how I'm reading it. So if I'm wrong, let me know. And if I'm right, maybe we can rewrite this to, so that somehow we can take the word substantial out of there. So, so the, the resolution before you tonight would uh, approve an additional six month extension based on the language within the resolution. The applicant must obtain a building permit by December 25th of 2016 and also complete substantial, uh, re complete work in reliance on that building permit. Really what we're looking for is vertical construction. So the garage foundation and the garage walls coming up, which is achievable by December 25th of 2016. Okay, but in terms, so that's, that's how I read it. But in terms of the overall project, vertical wood or vertical sticks in my world doesn't mean substantial completion and I, I just want it if I'm right I just want to make it so that we don't bind this in any way shape or form through the chair if I could uh, Commissioner Samu in, in terms of that portion of the staff report under analysis I think Matt is referring to the prior extension and when it expires as we look forward what we're anticipating is that the applicant would likely secure a permit in August of this year. And the substantial work that would essentially give with the six month extension that Matt's recommending tonight until basically the end of this year, from August to the end of this year to do substantial construction. We would an anticipate that occurring and in terms of substantial, what does that mean? It really means that they're putting in the foundation, the garage, and they initiate vertical construction. Initiate. That's substantial. What we're looking for is that they not only pull the building permit during this proposed requested six-month extension, they pull the permit during that period, and they really commit to the project in terms of construction activity. To us, that's not just preparing the site. That's putting in the foundation 
and beginning vertical construction. We've had quite a few conversations with the development team. Uh, we fully expect that that level of work will be done well in advance of the six month requested extension. Okay, that's fine. I just want to make sure that there's not going to be any issue with the verbiage in this. We don't believe there will be. We, okay. We've had extensive conversations. So I think there's, and, and the applicant's representatives are here this night, this evening, and they will provide a brief uh, presentation so you can ask them. But I think we have a clear understanding and an understanding that they will be able to perform under this requested extension. All right, thank you. Um, through the chair, um, if I may also briefly speak to this issue. Um, regardless of what's in the staff report, um, my reading of the actual, be it resolved on the resolution wording, doesn't necessarily create that firm binder on the substantial work issue. Um, it's simply on the extension for the, obtain the um, obtaining of the building permit. It doesn't actually include the substantial work language in the be it resolved. So I don't think we're going to have the problem that you were concerned about. Okay. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions for staff? Okay. Thank you, Matt. Is there anyone from the public here who would, would like to speak on this? The applicant, please. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Peter Dunn. I'm representing San Bruno Plaza LLC and Saras Regis Group tonight. Thank you very much for your consideration this evening. And uh, I want to thank uh, Matt for his report. Um, I'll just add a little more flavor to what we've been doing over the last six months. Uh, Matt gave a pretty good assessment of the progress that we've made. Uh, so not only, um, not only are we in for a second round of building permit plan check. And incidentally, that's a f that package is about 400 sheets thick. And there's another specification book that's, that's just as thick as well. So there's a substantial amount of work that goes into permitting a project like this. Uh, we are also in, to, in for final approvals for the civil improvements and the landscape, the, the sidewalk and the streetscape uh, work. Um, that uh, should be pretty close to being approved by the city at this point. We've also submitted shoring and excavation plans. Uh, the shoring has been um, a very complex uh, riddle to solve for us. There's a lot of groundwater underneath that site, and we want to make sure that we've done it right. Um, we've consulted uh, thoroughly on the subject, and we feel confident that the plan that we've submitted to the city uh, will be uh, we'll be able to execute it very successfully and, and it will uh, facilitate the, the rest of the construction of the project. <clears throat> we also have all of our PG&E approvals in place for the project. Um, so that's a substantial body of work. Um, PG&E takes a long time for them to, pr to uh, approve designs and, and we're ready to go on that front. Uh, we also have a Caltrans encroachment permit that's been issued. It took us eight months to get that permit. Uh, but we now have that in hand, so we can, uh, the very first piece of work that we need to do is relying on that permit, so that was a critical piece of the puzzle to get that in place. Uh, in addition, uh, Caltrans had a signal cabinet located partially on the project site that needed to be relocated in order for us to start our shoring, and that work's been accomplished as well. Um, finally, we've received uh, permits from the city of South San Francisco, who runs the sewer treatment plant, as well as from San Mateo County Health to discharge groundwater. Um, we're working with the city on final details of that plan, but that will allow us to excavate the basement and to move forward with the project. So those were key approvals as well. Um, so as you can tell, we're, um, we're down to finalizing the building permit right now. We're working closely with staff. We're very uh, optimistic that we can have a permit issued by uh, late summer, and uh, at which time we would immediately uh, commence work and proceed in a diligent process, a uh, diligent fashion to build the building. Uh, thank you very much for your consideration and happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Any uh, questions? Up through the chair. Commissioner Case. I'm <clears throat> sorry I was late, but. Um, Anyway, that being what it is, um, <clears throat> with this extension, and if you're looking to
get the work started or, you know, get the substantial amount completed. You already then have your uh, subcontractors uh, lined up or in line or whatever, or how's that whole process working? Sure. We're actually, um, one of the things that we've been doing and, and they've been at city meetings is uh, we're working with uh, general contractor uh, Johnston Moyer Incorporated. Uh, very well, very experienced in this type of product, in this type of building, uh, and they've been at the table with us for, I'd say, almost a year now, uh, working very closely with us on all the, the myriad of details that go into a project like this. They were very helpful in terms of the shoring design, um, and a lot of the other, just the, the you know, the, the tons of details that go into this project. So. Um, they're, they're, they're at the table, they're with us, and, and they'll be ready to go when, uh, when everything comes together. So that's your general contractor? Correct. That's Johnson. Where, where are they located? Where are they at? They're based out of San Carlos. Okay. Um, so are they going to then be doing, you know, shoring themselves, or do you know, are they going to be... Well, they have a, they have a subcontractor. They subcontract everything out. Um, the, uh, the shoring design is a company called American Drilling. <coughs> And they too have been at the table for probably six to eight months now, if, if not longer. And the, uh, the, the, the shoring design, including a structural design, structural calculations, have all been provided by American Drilling through the general contractor, and that's what the city's reviewing right now. So it's, it's actually the, the group that's going to do the actual work has done the design, completed the design to get going. Okay. Um, one more question along those lines. Uh, as far as being in contact with the San Mateo County Building Trades, have you guys been in contact with them as far as, you know, local contractors, local union contractors, or anything like that? The Saris Regis Group does a lot of different projects around the, around the area, around the Bay, and they have a very good relationships with the Building Trades. So I'm not privy to what sort of conversations they might have had, but um, I'm sure there have been some. Thank you. Good answer. Any other questions? Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. Is there anyone else from the public who'd like to speak on this one tonight? Okay. Seeing no one, then we'll move the conversation back to the commission for a motion or comment. Through the chair, please please acknowledge and note that you have two resolutions for action tonight on this, this item. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, David. Yes, there are two items. Do we need to make a motion individually for those? Or? Uh, yes, please. Okay. So we're looking for two motions. All through the chair? Commissioner Chase. I guess if nobody else is going to say anything, I'll chime in. I'll um, make a motion that we have Approve resolution number 2016-06. Um, it's a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Bruno approving a six-month extension of the expiration period for the conditional use permit and parking exception for the mixed-use development located at 406 418 San Mateo Avenue. Uh, yeah. APN 020-364-320. 020-364-120, and 020-364-140. I think that covers the first resolution, does it not? <laughs> it does. Thank you, Commissioner. And do we have a second? Through the chair, all seconds. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is this a roll call also, David? Yes, yes please. All right. Chair Biasotti? Aye. Vice Chair Kayal? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Mishra? Aye. Commissioner Semud. Aye. Thank you. So Hello. do we. Sorry. Do I. Oh, did I, <laughs> do I get a vote? Thank you, Commissioner. Sure. Yes. Commissioner Thank Chase. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I know okay. I'm late, and but on you. the second part of the resolution, do we have a motion? I'll, I'll move uh, through the chair. <clears throat> I'd like to make a motion to approve resolution number 2016 07, a resolution of the Planning Commission of the City of San Bruno approving a six month extension of the expiration period for the architectural review permit for the mixed use development located at 406 418 San Mateo Avenue. Thank you. And do we have a second for that? Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Roll call vote once again, please, David. Chair Biasotti? Aye. 
Vice Chair Kayal? Aye. Commissioner Chase? Aye. Commissioner Johnson? Aye. Commissioner Mishra? Aye. Commissioner Samut? Aye. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay, public hearings, item 6A, Caltrans property at the northwest, northwest corner of San Bruno Avenue and Glendale Drive. Staff report, please. Thank you. As indicated, the item before you tonight is a temporary use permit request to allow the continued use of an off-site construction staging area within the Crestmore neighborhood. The site itself is located on the northwest corner of San Bruno Avenue and Glendale Drive, and the site is owned by the state of California. As the commission is aware, the, re the rebuilding of the infrastructure within the Crestmore neighborhood has been ongoing since the explosion and fire. The subject site has been used for, a state, used for staging to support the ongoing infrastructure improvements within the Crestmore neighborhood. Those improvements include replacement of underground utilities, repair and replacement of street sidewalk and street lights, and the replacement of the Earl Glenview Park. The San Bruno Municipal Code allows construction staging areas lasting up to one year periods. And as you'll recall, the Planning Commission approved a number of temporary use permits to accommodate the ongoing infrastructure improvements within the Crestmore neighborhood. And if you turn to Exhibit D within your staff report, this provides an overview of the two storage yards that have been approved over the years. You have storage yard number one and storage yard number two. Storage yard number one is the southernmost storage yard, which is located, located closest to San Bruno Avenue. And I'll just give a brief history of the, the actions that have taken place over the last few years. In April of 2012, the Planning Commission originally approved a temporary use permit for the area referred to as storage yard number one. One year later, in April of 2013, the original temporary use permit was extended for an additional year. A few months after that, in June of 2013, the Planning Commission approved a temporary use permit to expand the construction staging area to include the area referred to as storage yard number two. In May of 2014, the Planning Commission approved a request to extend the temporary use permit for storage yard number one and storage yard number two for an additional year. And in April of 2015, the Planning Commission approved a temporary use permit to extend um, the use of storage yard number one and storage yard number two for an additional year. The current application before the commission tonight is to use storage yard number two for an additional year. At this point, there's no more need to use storage yard number one. The ongoing infrastructure improvements are anticipated to last throughout 2016 and into 2017. Given the schedule of these infrastructure improvements, staff anticipated having to return to the Planning Commission for renewal of the temporary use permit. The same conditions of approval will go forward with this current application. I would like to point out one condition of approval, and that's condition of approval number five, which requires the applicant to maintain the construction staging area in a clean and orderly condition. Additionally, any trash, dirt, and debris shall be cleaned and removed on a daily basis and cannot be stored on site. Right now, the two sites are vacant. Um, they are clean. However, there is a portion of the fence that has fallen down on storage yard number two, and staff has coordinated with the project manager regarding this issue, and that will be um, addressed shortly. Overall, staff supports the temporary use permit request and recommends that the Planning Commission approve the temporary use permit subject to the findings and conditions of approval within the staff report. That concludes my staff presentation. The project manager, Harry Burroughs, is also in attendance tonight and will also provide a brief update on the overall infrastructure improvements within the Crestmore neighborhood. We'd also be happy to answer any clarifying questions that you have. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the Planning Commission. My name is Harry Burroughs, and I'm the city's project manager for the Crestmore Reconstruction Project. And as Matt described, um, there's been a tremendous amount of work that has occurred up in the neighborhood to date, and we um, can see the finish line now, um, which, is, which is great news. The, most of the work that's occurred to date has been underground, so you can't really see the, the um, fruits of our labor, so to speak. Um, this upcoming project is going to be the replacement of the curb gutter sidewalk, rebuilding of the streets, and replacement of the um, streetlight system within the neighborhood. 
We actually opened bids for that, this project um, last Thursday, and we're scheduled to go to um, City Council this coming Tuesday with the award of the contract. So we're hoping to get this construction project um, underway here very shortly. This will be the last major portion of work within the neighborhood. Um, the additional project um, beyond this that actually Mark described in his presentation earlier is the um, replacement of the Earl Glenview Park in the neighborhood. That process or, or that um, project right now is in the planning process. Um, it's anticipated to go into final design later this year with construction um, occurring in 2017, probably be completed toward the latter part of 2017. And um, hopefully at that point in time, all the reconstruction within the neighborhood itself will have been completed. And as Matt described, in terms of the two storage yards, the item in front of you this evening, um, the smaller one, which is the one that's closer to San Bruno Avenue, uh, that storage yard we are going to um, be demolishing here with this next contract. It's written into the contract that the contractor will remove the existing fences and clean up that entire corner. The entire site where both of these storage yards are are actually um, subleased to us by Church of the Highlands, and they lease those sites from Caltrans. Church of the Highlands is looking um, toward doing um, a small beautification project on that corner, planting some trees and other things to help um, um, be beautify that you know entrance into the neighborhood and in, into the city of San Bruno. The larger storage yard, as Matt described, was supposed to be um, more temporary in nature, but given its size and given the complexity of this next project, um, we've decided that that's where we're going to stage the contractor's work. Again, we've written into this contract that the contractor will go in, um, clean up that storage yard, straighten the fences um, in a more permanent nature. At the completion of his work, also in his contract, is to remove that um, storage yard, clean up the site, do hydro seeding, and um, leave it hopefully in better condition than we found it in when we um, inherited it. So with that, um, I'm open to any additional questions that you may have related to the rebuilding of the Crestmore neighborhood. Thank you. Any questions? No? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone in the public who'd like to speak on this issue? No? Okay. So we'll move it back to the commission for comment or vote. Get through the chair. Commissioner Smoot. Uh, I'd like to make the motion that uh, Planning Commission approved temporary use permit 16-002 based on findings of fact 1 through 3 and conditions of approval 1 through 13. Thank you. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And the motion is approved. Item B, 659 Huntington Avenue. It's a request for use permit to allow the installation of an approximately 24 by 60 temporary modular building within the parking lot of Artichoke Joe's. Staff report, please. Uh, good evening, commissioners. Michael Smith, Planning Department staff. We have before you a use permit for to allow the installation of a temporary modular building within the parking lot to house and administrative offices for the gaming operations associated with Artichoke Joe's Casino. The applicant is proposing to place a temporary modular building measuring approximately 24 by 60 in the parking lot adjacent to the permanent building to house up to 10 employees. Artichoke Joe's is, uh, had to hire additional employees to, uh, due to recent state and federal regulations that require additional staff to administer. Presently, there is not enough room in the existing building on the site to house these additional 10 staff people. Um, and uh, it will take some time for Artichoke Joe's to develop a more permanent solution to the space problem. Permanent solutions to the space shortage include constructing a, an addition to the existing building or purchasing another property to house the administrative functions of the casino. The casino currently operates with 40 gaming tables and the proposed project would not result in any additional gaming tables being added. The placement of the temporary building uh, would result in the temporary occupation of nine parking spaces in the parking lot 
and the placement of the building would comply with all development standards for the district. The applicant is requesting to maintain the building on the site for a period not to exceed two years. During this period, the applicant will develop a long-term solution to the casino's space needs for these employees. The finite time period also ensures the city that the building will not become a permanent fixture on the site. Pursuant to the conditions of approval, after two years, the applicant would need to submit a new use permit uh, request to retain the structures for the commissioner's consideration. Otherwise, the structure would need to be removed from the site. The conditions of approval would further require the building to be detailed in such a manner so that it is more compatible with the character of the central business district. Staff sent a legal notice to all property owners within 300 feet of the subject property and no comments have been received. Staff recommends that the Planning Commission approve the use permit request based upon findings 1 through 3 and conditions of approval 1 through 12 as outlined in the staff report. Uh, and this concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions or comments. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Any questions? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Is the applicant here? We'll open up the public comment and you can speak on your project, please. Thank you. My name is Stephen Leslie. I'm a, I work for Artichoke Joe's. I'm an architect. Been worked there for 26 years, if you can believe that or not. Um, so, uh, I mean, everything that was explained is what uh, we're trying to accomplish. Uh, we have several options, looking at additions or acquiring land or even using existing buildings that we have uh, adjacent to Artichoke Joe's. Uh, we have a history of using some uh, modulars. In, in 2007, we utilized some temporary modulars when we um, remodeled the employee lounge. And then uh, back in uh, 1991, we actually used modulars when we were doing an addition to the card room. So we're, uh, we, uh, and they were all done in the same area, in that one parking area that you see on your maps. So, um, but the, but it's, they are out of room. If you've ever been there, it's a very tight space. and and all these federal and state laws that have just bombarded them uh, has just created a, a, this space that they're out of. So we needed an immediate, immediate kind of solution while we look and accomplish what we want to do for the long term. Um, so if I'm here, if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Through the chair. Commissioner Smith. Uh, Mr. Leslie, have you uh, read and, and agree with all the conditions of approval on this project? Uh, we have, I think it's a two-year term, and there are some uh, bonds that are supposed to be uh, submitted after the two years. Well, yeah, specifically uh, item, uh, condition of approval eight regarding windows. Oh, yes. Window, cut, window awnings. Yeah, paint, in fact, all the, that. Do they, Michael, do they have the current drawings that we submitted? Okay, so yes, they're, they're uh, from the original submittal that we did, that was one of the conditions of approval. And then since then, uh, we made a re uh, revision, which you probably have, that shows the windows in the front. Okay, so you agree with them? Oh, yes. All right, great, yeah, and, thanks. And, and I checked with the, the first thing I did was talk to the modular company, and they said they're pretty, they're pretty loose about doing whatever we want done. So they said we can easily put the windows there, uh, we can relocate okay. doors. Uh, they weren't going to do the awning, so we're doing that one ourselves, but that's not a, a big deal to us. So. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else from the public here who would like to speak on this item? No? Okay. Once again, we'll move it back to the commission for comment or vote. Yeah, through the oh. chair. Commissioner Smith. Oh. No, go right ahead, Commissioner Smith. Well, if no, there are no questions, then I'd like to make the motion that we uh, approve use permit 16-007 uh, based on findings uh, of 1 through 3 and conditions of approval 1 through 12. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion is approved, and I guess there's a 10-day appeal period on that as well. Okay. 
Good luck. Item C, 1150 El Camino Real, Suite 245. It's a request for use permit to allow alcoholic, alcoholic beverage sales with a type 40 ABC license in conjunction with an arcade. Staff report, please, Michael. Yeah, Michael Smith, planning for our staff. Uh, commissioners, you have before you a request for uh, use permit to sell alcoholic beverages with a type 40 ABC license in conjunction with an arcade doing business as Gamma Ride Incorporated, uh, located in the shops at Tanferan. Uh, the commercial space is located on the upper floor near the internal entrance to Target. Uh, Gamma Ride Incorporated previously operated an arcade with an ABC license in Belmont, California. As part of the city's review process, um, we contacted the uh, police department down there um, and determined that there weren't any nuisance problems associated with this particular arcade and the ABC license. The use includes a small dining area at the front of the arcade, which uh, sells snacks um, to patrons. And it also has two flat screen TVs. It's within this area that they want to um, provide uh, um, beer to uh, patrons, and it would only be in this area of the commercial space. The requested use permit would permit the operator to sell beer within this space in conjunction with, um, with the snacks, but no wine or spirits. Gamma Ride Incorporated is an arcade that caters to kids, mostly tweens and teens and their families, similar to a Chuck E. Cheese, but for older kids. Uh, staff sent a legal notice to all property owners within 300 feet of the subject property, and uh, no comments were received. Um, because Gamma Ride was operated in a nearby community without becoming a nuisance, and it is aimed at kids and their families, um, it would close at 9 p.m. Um, when the shopping center closes. And finally, because it would only sell beer, Staff feels comfortable in recommending approval of the request pursuant to findings one through five and conditions of approval one through 12 in the staff report. Um, this concludes my presentation. I'm available for any questions or comments. Thank you, Michael. Do we have any questions for staff? No question. Please. Uh, Michael, um, are there any other establishments other than BJ's that sell alcohol on the premise of Tanfran? I, I believe there are. Um, I don't know all of them off offhand. Okay. Um, I think Hooters may be one as well. That's right. Yeah. I, well, re the the restaurants. Yeah. Um, I know. Aside from the restaurants, okay. um, are there any others? Any, any feedback or any any concerns to to be aware of? Uh, there's there's none uh, other that I'm aware of, other okay. than Target, which is an off sale type of license. Yeah. Thank you. And, and through the chair, Michael, you may want to talk about uh, the feedback you received from the police department on this application. Uh, yes, uh, um, the police department did review the application. Uh, they reached out to the Belmont Police Department as well, um, where the operator previously operated the arcade um, and also had a, um, an ABC license there as well. And uh, there were no nuisance um, nuisances associated with or, or calls to service for, for this particular operator. So um, he seems to be uh, running a very good operation. Thank you for the feedback. Okay. Uh, through the chair. Commissioner Smith. Michael, um, in Mr. Yavari's letter, he states that in Belmont they served uh, both beer and wine. Um, is, is there a particular reason why they're not going to be serving wine in San Bruno? Um, According to the ABC license for which they requested, um, it, o it only allows beer. So um, I stuck with the requirements of that license in determining what they would be able to sell. Because if they're requesting a, um, a license that only allows them to sell beer, then that's essentially what they get approved for. All right, thank you. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. We'll open up the public comment, and is the applicant here? Would you step to the podium and tell us about your project? Okay. 
Good evening, Commissioners. My name is Sohail Teherian. I'm the General Manager at Gamma Right Inc. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of uh, Mr. Jose Novari, the applicant who is sitting right there. Um, as Mr. Smith has mentioned, we were uh, previously located in Belmont, where we had our arcade for approximately two years. And um, we had a Type 41 license over there for uh, beer and wine. Um, there were no incidents over there. Um, we, made, we made sure to always maintain um, an area of safety and uh, comfort among the families. Um, our primary goal is to create an arcade and an environment where families feel safe first and foremost and have fun and we always keep an eye on all patrons who um, are consuming their alcohol. We make sure to limit them so that they do not um, over exceed a certain amount. Um, ID every single person who comes to purchase alcohol from us. And now in our new location in Tanferen, we're going for a type 40 to kind of clarify um, the difference. In our Belmont location, we had a fully stocked snack bar with a kitchen. And the Type 41 on sale beer and wine um, is for restaurants, so with a kitchen, um, that they would be able to sell beer and wine. In our space in Tanferen, uh, one of the um, restrictions in our uh, lease agreement states that uh, we cannot have a kitchen where we would sell uh, food so that to not create any competition with the food court and other vendors that are currently in the shopping center. Um, so because of the lack of kitchen space, we would have to apply for a Type 40 on sale, strictly beer, no wine or spirits. Um, Gamma Ride Arcade is a, an arcade that um, primarily has um, high-tech uh, simulation rising games, um, 3D experiences, things that you would normally find in like a Universal Studios or a Disneyland type of area. The type of space that we have created is a place where families can come to have a good time, to have safe, complete, high-tech fun, places where if they may not necessarily be able to afford a trip to Disneyland or Universal Studios, to be able to come have that same experience um, with more value for their money that they're spending in a local area. Um, we pride ourselves in the environment that we have created. The feedback that we have gotten from our customers has been incredibly positive. We get a lot of people coming who say, man, it's about time you guys opened up an arcade here. We've been waiting for this for so long. And um, on a more personal level, I myself uh, grew up in San Bruno until I was about seven or eight years old. Um, grew up in Peninsula Place just off of Cherry Avenue. So I remember Tan Ferran um, pre-remodeling the uh, the little arcade in the downstairs of the United Artists Theater that was pretty much empty all the time. Um, so for me, having seen that and experienced that as a young child, now to be fully grown and now working at an arcade that is placed in that same mall in this capacity and bringing in um, the sort of enjoyment to the citizens of this town, it really brings a lot of joy to me and we hope to continue to create um, that same experience um, for years to come. Um, thank you for your time, and I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Any questions? Uh, through the chair. Um, just because I do have a little bit of concern regarding um, the repeated nuisance activities and police interventions part of the municipal code, can you just go into a little bit more detail about your IDing policy, just to make sure that we're not going to run into an issue of selling alcohol to minors and so on and so forth? On our registers, we have written um, the date and the year um, where everything from, for example, today's date in 1995. From this date past, they are over the age of 21, and it is safe to sell alcohol to them. Anyone past that cannot be sold alcohol. Um, we have trained all of our employees to ID everyone, no matter what the age, no matter um, what the personal appearance of the customer may be. Um, we ID everyone just to make sure that there is never an issue of um, an accidental selling to minors or a conflict of interest where that would occur. Yes, 
to your question? Yes. Okay. okay. Anyone else? I do. Commissioner. Well, I'm encouraged that I, at my age I get carded. <laughs> <laughs> I might just go there every day to get a feel good. <laughs> um, I see that you're going to be providing some um, opportunities for parties as well. And it's not uncommon when parties, whether it's a birthday party or what event it might be, that parents bring in their own items. You know, they bring in their cakes, they bring in whatever it may be. How can you control what might be taking place from, a, you know, alcohol to minors or uh, food that you're indicating that you're not able to uh, serve food there that that takes place? What are the restrictions or what are your policies around that dining party room? As far as the uh, dining policy goes for birthday parties, um, it is listed in our agreement and agreed with the shops at Tamfran <clears throat> that we encourage all customers who come in and book parties with us um, to purchase food from the food court or from the restaurants located within there and bring those to the party. Um, soft drinks and cake is not restricted. They can bring those from any outside area. Um, and as far as alcoholic beverages are concerned, um, we in our policies, we will be stating that um, customers will not be allowed to bring in their own alcoholic beverages. Though we do have a Type 40 license that permits the sale of alcohol on the mm -hmm. premises, they cannot bring their own, and that it must be purchased from us in order so that we can um, regulate and make sure that there are no alcohol given to minors and no um, issues with that occurring. So if someone wants to bring it in and they want to ask for corkage opportunities, well, we won't be selling wine or spirits, so we probably won't even have a corkscrew there to be able to open for them. But your answer would um, be? We would not allow that, no. We would ask them to return it back to their vehicle or take it, remove it from the premises um, and express our, sorry, say sorry that we cannot um, accommodate you, but that is our policy. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, through the chair, I Please. do have one final question. Um, also, as regards to issues of people, you know, becoming intoxicated, um, are your employees going to be trained to look out for signs of people um, who need to be cut off? Absolutely. Um, all previous employees who were with us at our Belmont location have already been trained to be aware and to keep an eye out for uh, those patrons who have purchased and are consuming the alcoholic beverages um, to make sure that it does not get out of hand. Um, and all new employees have also been trained on this matter as well. So I have a question. Um, what's the delivery system? Bottles, cans, tap, what are you looking at? Um, bottles. We um, purchase them all, we stock them in our freezer, um, pop the cap bump in on that, serve it to them, that's all. And we have signs posted everywhere um, within our facility and we mentioned all of our patrons that um, all alcoholic beverages purchased must be consumed um, within our premises and cannot be taken outside into the mall area or anywhere outside. And so we are keeping an eye on that to make sure that that does not happen. Thank you. Also, I was looking at your floor plan and I noticed there's no pump it up or DDR machines. <laughs> does that not fit your... Uh... No, it's... Um, <clears throat> The DDR is one of the machines that we get um, asked about a lot, and it is something that we've looked into bringing in. So um, we just recently opened up. It's maybe been just a little over a month now. Mm -hmm. We are looking into bringing in new things. So, yeah, hopefully we will be able to bring in those as well. Very good. Thank you. Of course. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Uh, through the chair. Michael. Uh, I just also wanted to point out uh, condition of approval number 10 uh, in, response, in response to Commissioner Johnson's um, concern. And just to, this condition came straight from San Bruno Police Department, uh, the reviewing agency, and that that beer should only be consumed within the dining area. So a patron sh is not a really allowed to walk around and play the games at the same time that they're drinking. They're really supposed to be, according to the condition, in the dining area only, which is about five to 600 square feet. Through the chair. Uh, Michael, I actually have uh, one quick question for you. Um, I just kind of wanted to bring in, uh, call to mind your condition of approval number five, uh, where we would be uh, having this permit called back if there um, are problems and negative uh, impacts. Is there going to be a kind of a system in place for just keeping an eye on this project just to make sure that 
we don't have those issues? Um, we, we, we definitely can. Um, whenever, I mean, I, I frequent the mall on occasion, so when I do, I can definitely stop by just to see how things are going. That's, that's generally going to be during the day. Um, but uh, we respond mostly on a complaint basis, mm -hmm. so if we get a call from someone that, that there's something happening, then, then we would investigate further at that point. And just to clarify, would San Bruno PD notify you if there had been issues on the property? Uh, that's a good question. Through the chair, if I could, yes, they would. Okay. And I think that we would rely on the PD. Uh, they helped us in putting together the conditions of approval. They do have a presence at the mall. They are aware of these conditions of approval. If there's something occurring that is inconsistent with these conditions of approval, they would notify us and we would initiate a process to bring this back. Thank you. Is there anyone? Yeah, just through the chair. We should just let the police department do their work and we can do ours. How's that? <laughs> okay. Uh, is there anyone else from the public who'd like to speak on this item? No? Okay. Seeing none, then we'll move it back to the commission for comments or motions. Through the chair. Commissioner Chase. If nobody has any comments, <clears throat> any further comments, I'll make a motion that we approve. Well, let me find it. Use permit 16-005 based on findings of fact 1 through 5, conditions of approval 1 through 12. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. It's approved. And I guess there's a 10-day appeal period on that as well. Good luck. Item D. Through five. Yes, sir. Before you start on the item D, um, I wanted to point out that I have a conflict of interest. Okay. Uh, I have a property within 500 feet of this, so I'll be excusing myself. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Matt Jones, uh, Planning Department staff. Go ahead. Okay. Um, it's a request for a use permit to allow alcoholic beverage sales in conjunction with a restaurant per chapters 12.84.2. 10 and 12.96.12.C, the San Bruno Municipal Code. Uh, the applicant is proposing to add a Type 41 ABC license for beer and wine to a new restaurant, Saji Japanese Restaurant. City staff's already approved a building permit for tenant improvements, which was issued on March 24th of this year. At the existing restaurant, there's a per, oh, the existing restaurant is a permitted use within the central business district, so planning commission approval is only required for the sale of beer and wine. No expansion of building will occur, and no changes are proposed to the exterior of the building. The restaurant area is approximately 1,498 square feet with 35 seats and contains approximately 508 square feet of dining area. Uh, the restaurant will have bar seating, which will serve the same purpose as the restaurant seating, uh, which is to serve both food and drinks. Alcohol sales would be available to only to diners at the restaurant. Sale of beer, wine, and sake would be conducted in conjunction with the restaurant. Sake is considered wine per section BPC.9.1.23007 of the California Code. If the Planning Commission approves this application, the applicant will also be required to obtain a liquor license from the California Department of Alcohol and Beverage Control. Uh, the hours of operation would be Wednesday through Monday from 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. for lunch and 5.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. for dinner. The Police Department has also reviewed this application and is not opposed to the application based on the recommended conditions of approval for the project. If any operational issues arise in the future related to this use permit, the community development director has the authority to call the item back to the planning commission. Additionally, I wanted to bring your attention to uh, one area of uh, the condition of approval number four. Uh, there's a discrepancy between what's stated in the staff report and the applicant's statement. Um, 
It currently <coughs> reads, the hours of operation shall be limited to 11.30 a.m. to 2 p.m. and 5.30 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Tuesday through Sunday. Any changes from the hours of operation shall require prior authorization of the community development director. Any change that results in a later closing time shall also require review by the police department. Um, my recommendation would be to strike the first sentence to say, quote, the hours of operation shall be limited to 11.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m., end quote. This provides the applicant with the ability to have greater flexibility with his days of operation. Um, and that concludes my presentation, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Uh, through the chair, I actually recall reading in um, the uh, owner's statement that the business will actually be closed on Tuesdays. So I don't know that Tuesday through Sunday, should, should it not read Monday? So through the chair, um, I, with the proposed amendment of condition of, of approval number four, uh, the sentence would just say the hours of operation shall be limited to 11.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. Uh, okay, which, and we're, so we're striking completely Tuesday. Which would strike Tuesday. completely right. the Excellent. days of the week. All right, just wanted to clarify. Great. Through the chair. Commissioner Chase. Along those same lines, I was kind of thinking that Perhaps maybe, you know, if you leave at 11.30 to 10.30, I mean, if they're closed from 2 to 5.30 or if it's Tuesday through Sunday or whatever, and he decides he's going to change the hours, wouldn't it be better to have the hours of operation shall be limited to the hours that the restaurant is open? Does that, does that, make, any, does that make any difference? It Versus, seems like you know, that through the chair it seems like that would suffice i think the purpose of providing those specific hours um one of the one of the things listed in the staff report sort of addresses the um how late the business is open having an effect so you know if you were to propose a change in the hours of operation this sort of puts a cap on the hours to 10 30 p.m um which staff believes uh contributes to um, the police department's approval of the project. Well, who submitted the, the hours of operation? The hours of operation were submitted by the applicant. Correct. So therefore, if it read the hours of, um, of operation shall be, well, forget it. It's okay. Never mind. We'll go with that. Through the chair, if, if I could just clarify, I'm, I'm supportive of what the the planners indicated here. I think that the only thing I would say is that the hours of operation shall be limited to 11.30 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. daily, period. And that's fine. If they operate within those hours, whenever they're open during those hours, mm -hmm. that's, that's not an issue for us or the police department. Thank you. Good. Anyone else with questions for staff? Okay. Very much. Is the applicant here? Would you like to speak on your project, please? We'll open up the public comment for you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, my name's Hiroaki Makiyama. I'm the owner of the new restaurant. I am requesting for use permit to sell beer and wine at my restaurant. Um, this is my first restaurant, but I, my dad is helping me out, which he had a couple restaurants in San Francisco. So he had maybe like 20 years of restaurant ex, ex, uh, experience. So yeah, that helps a lot. Um, the restaurant will be called Saji at 528 San Mateo Avenue. Um, I'll be serving authentic Japanese food from all over the world, vegetable, freshest fish, and um, yeah, and a lot of Japanese sake and beer also. So the restaurant will have a bar that will seat around maybe 10 to 12 people, the maximum capacity like 35 people. And yeah, I will be applying for the ABC license after this use permit. 
business hour is going to be from 11.30 to 10.30. Yeah, we'll be targeting customers that are local, also uh, everybody from the Bay Area. Um, we have old customers that are already, that already you know, ex express their intention of becoming a regular customer at my restaurant. Um, and yeah, we will have, uh, for alcohol, we will have bottle service, which um, they could save if they don't finish drinking at my restaurant for next, next time they visit. Uh, we'll be serving out sake with uh, glass cups, small bottles, medium-sized bottles. And for beers, we'll have a draft beer, a canned beer, uh, bottled beer, which they'll be drinking from glass bo glass glasses also. Um, and that concludes my statement, if you guys have any questions. <laughs> Thank you. So do we have any questions for the applicant? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't think there's anyone from the public left here to make a comment, so we'll <laughs> open it and close it. And we'll move the conversation back to the commission for a motion and a vote for comments. And do we want to include the proposed amendment? Through the chair? Um, I'll move that we approve use permit 16-002 based on findings 1 through 5 as amended and conditions of approval 1 through 18. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, it's approved. And there will be a 10-day appeal period before you can finalize your permit. Good luck. All right. Uh, city staff discussion. Uh, through the chair, the staff would just like to bring a couple things to your attention. One is we're not anticipating having a need for the June Architectural Review Committee meeting uh, due to the fact that we don't have items coming forward that would be ready. But we are expecting to have two planning commission meetings in June. So in terms of your adjournment tonight, uh, I would appreciate it if you could adjourn your planning commission this evening to June 7th. And we are anticipating having a second meeting in June, June 21st. But at the June 7th meeting, we're expecting to bring forward the city's walk and bike plan. The, Bicycle and Pedestrian Master Plan. We've been working on that uh, as a community, as a staff, for a number of months now. It's going through review. The public review drafts are out. I believe you have copies of those. They're online. And the staff is fine-tuning that document and will be prepared to bring that forward for consideration for a recommendation for approval onto the City Council. So we're, we're looking at the date of June 7th to do that. So I would appreciate it this evening if you could continue this, this meeting to June 7th. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, David. Planning Commission discussion. Anyone? Oh, where's Sid? Did he leave? Oh, he can return. He was recused. Oh. Okay. Uh, but did he go home or is he still here for the Well, his laptop's time? still here, so hopefully. Okay. Nope. All right, in that case, we will adjourn until June 7th. Thank you. Thank you.